Hey guys, what's up? This is Rapid, and I will be bringing you game two, or rather round two action from the Go For Lol Cup number 56, I believe. Uh, this will be round two between these guys, led by their fearless leader, Vidu. This will be, uh, let's see, what is this? Team Death Ladder. And they will be going up against uh, these guys over here, led by a guy named Yes, who apparently was like the second person to make an account in this game, as that's basically the only way you can get the name Yes, and or a pretty epic name change snipe. But uh, they will be uh, in Condite Gaming, which is actually a Latin word that means uh, like poorly put together or something like that, if I am correct. So in Condite Gaming versus Team Death Ladder. For round two of go for lol number 56 so thanks for checking this out and hopefully this should be a really good game everybody here is anywhere from between a 1700 to 2000 elo and actually chaotic entropy gets dark binded flowers for algernon oh you dirty dirty man as uh he picks up the first blood and uh also an amazing name choice for him as well i gotta tell you as far as names are concerned i'm definitely uh, gonna lead slightly in the favor of uh of team in condite just because they have i mean they have freaking flowers for algernon epic epic name there leisure <laughs> yes i don't know how you get that uh wag boss as well as top lane we will see rumble on rewald don't exactly know what's up there but it looks like red buff will be attempted to be counter juggled here by uh vidu and company will be doing some sort of a dyrus pull over the wall and uh looks like he will have a lighthouse x it's actually lighthouse x lighthouse x or just X Lighthouse Sex, but uh, depending on how you want to view that, they will be uh, joined by the Alistar in the jungle. He's actually starting boots first and actually has only 38 armor, so it's going to be a little bit rough, but uh, depending on the direstness of this pull, it does not look like it will be very sleepy at all. Uh, we'll just see a blue buff start here for Wagvoss, definitely going some attack speed runes all the way up at 0.7, and uh, actually starting with his Hungering Strike, so... That's uh, definitely going to be effective at uh, moving him through the jungle a lot faster, but his red buff is kind of gone. And uh, whereas before the metagame dictated that you'd leave a minion behind, now you take the minions so that you can see the respawn timer for the buff. And actually, the all-star is coming up here behind Rewald, and will this be an effective gank? It looks like a Trundle is... Uh, that's not Trundle, it's Rumble, is going to be backing out, but he's actually going in here, and that will signal Gangplank to come in here, and Rewald could be in a lot of problems. He actually pops the Ignite, pops the Flashes, so that will be one for one summoners burned there. Meanwhile, bottom lane, it looks like a lot of damage going in onto, yes, and Hyde's double summoner heals, but as that exhaust did go down, that will be first blood for Hyde's Chaotic Entropy once again is in trouble, but the Flash not necessarily isn't necessary. As Yes will pick up the second kill there as well. Actually, uh, one picked up by Janna, one for Yes. And so, that is three kills already to start the game. As far as the CS is concerned, we only see uh, eight for Rumble top lane versus Udyr's seven. So, I definitely did not realize that, that was as far behind as, uh, as it is. Oh, middle lane and I'm gonna try to say uh, we do see as little as humanly possible this time around just because there are those annoying casting phrases that you know casters just say because they can't think of anything else to say and I think that's kind of like a cop-out especially the audience because it kind of sucks to hear the same thing over and over again it doesn't really make sense so I I will attempt to uh, go without any of those annoying casting phrases so it's gonna be a little bit slower but join me in this wonderful adventure as we experiment with things like uh, changing the way I speak and stuffs so here we go, Flowers for Algernon going uh, mid on Morgana. I guess that's another one of them, but uh, no second guessing, just all epic casting. Vidu uh, on Karthus is going to be uh, not effective at ganking because this guy is just like, hey, I'm going to walk into your lane and you are going to stay right there so I can auto attack you. Nope, Chuck Testa. Uh, an excellent black shield there, and by excellent I mean it was effective at blocking the second Q, but not the first one. As Garth has been dishing out a lot of damage, already has 24 AP versus just the 20 here for Morgana, so definitely going uh, the flats and per levels. But here comes Wagboss, they're going to jump in here onto Lighthouse X, and uh, just one Q from Warwick is Udyr is probably gonna, just going to go back anyways, so not really effective ganks from anyone at this stage in the game, just bottom lane going extremely well. As yes and Leisha have both picked up kills there. So if you guys want to check out a little bit more of the macro level stuff, we're going to see, oh man, a lot of extra damage here on Heinz. As yes is just 
Ugh, doing work. Uh, as far as team comps are concerned, here's what we're looking for uh, for team comps on uh, Team mm, Death Ladder. And actually, wow, that's a lot of damage, and that tornado will allow a couple more auto attacks. And wow, is that last one going to pick it up? Yes! And that will be so much just last second clutch damage coming out there. Picking up the kill there on Graves and just so much CC from Janna. That is why she is either picked or banned as currently number one support. As far as team comps are concerned, we're going to see a really strong AoE team team comp coming out from Vidu the All-Star and Heinz all dishing out significant AD, uh, AD and AP area of effect damage. Primarily AP, but uh, Graves definitely an AoE carry. So... Uh, you're going to have uh, things like Chaotic Entropy to... Excuse me, silence things like Warwick ults just to allow maximum effectiveness as far as the ults are concerned. And then there's also going to be Lighthouse picking up the kill top lane on the All-Star. Actually, no, the All-Star picked up that kill on, uh, on Rewalds. So definitely a really good j jungle gank there as uh, you don't see a whole lot of effectiveness as far as ganks are concerned from Gangplank. You know, he can lead in with his ult, but it does not look like that's what he opted to do. He's actually only level 4. So that's going to mean that he needs to sit in his jungle for a little bit longer to go ahead and catch up in level to a Warwick, who's actually also level 4, but just one minion away from hitting level 5. As uh, let's see, All-Star, yeah, has almost a full level to go. This is the point in time where my co-caster would pick up to give me time to uh, look around the map and do some extra analysis, but uh, as uh, that is not the case, we're just going to see some uh, some hot rapid on rapid action, which is not entirely appropriate, but should be effective nonetheless. So Rewald is just going to clear out the mini wave top lane as uh, Udyr was trying to push, uh, I believe that's what, three waves? Uh, two or three waves into Rumble's turret. We'll pick up the majority of that CS just because of the way that flame spritter works. And actually, he stopped the wave just out of the turret range. It's a really good way of making sure you uh, keep all of that CS. Yes, right now has uh, Dorian's Blade and actually uh, got Pink Ward placed there by Leisure to just deny them that bush domination. I definitely love going the uh, double green into Pink Ward build. Uh, you get the extra gold mastery and you go... Um, Fairy Charm into two green, one pink, and a health potion. It does look like that is what Leisure opted for. Yes, he's going to go ahead and knock down basically the entire wave and then just go back as well as uh, no more wards for your support means that you definitely need to uh, probably get out of dodge as soon as possible. Yes, is just going to blow pretty much everything she has on killing off this last cannon minion. Make sure she picks up the last hit and then head on out of there. It's probably a dude, but because she's playing a female hero, definitely gets to be female this game. Plus, I mean... It's more sporting. There's not a whole lot of things that aren't female about her, so... Back to the matter at hand, which is another one of those annoying things I need to stop saying. Rewald has gone down once, but also picked up the first kill of the game, so he will be okay. He's actually opted for those Merc Treads, which I really like, just because most of the Tiger Stance damage is magic damage. So keep that in mind. Udyr is not necessarily an AD carry. just gets really tanky and does tons of damage with the scaling from Tiger Stance, which I believe may be getting nerfed. Ah, uh, don't quote me on that, but... We do see Flowers for Algernon mid lane going for his Rod of Ages. Actually opted for the Blasting Wand over Catalyst first, so just doing maximum damage already up at 65 AP, whereas Vidu is only at 27 as he went for the uh, Catalyst route first. So you see a little bit of a deviance in the build. Morgana knows she already has that spell vamp, so she doesn't need the sustain as much, and uh, getting the Blasting Wand will make her spell vamp more effective, so giving her a little bit more sustain in that area as well. So definitely a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe a non-standard choice that uh, you guys need to think about and uh, engage in your own play. That's what I love watching all these high level games just because it's like, hey, well, I might not be as good as these guys are, but I can still learn from what they have to offer. So if you guys see something that's like just like hella cool, go ahead, check it out. And uh, well, it's one step on your way to being amazing. Speak of an amazing, Wag Boss is going to come up here. This is level 6 Warwick, so he does have his ult engaged, and that will allow Flowers for Algernon to do a clutch biting should she so desire. But there is a ward in that bush, so Wag Boss is not going to be able to get anything done there. Bottom lane, if I can click there fast enough, Chaotic Entropy getting chunked, and that's how much health she has even after that heal. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on. I did say go ahead there, so shame on me. And oh uh, wow, double word here from Karthus. That is so awesome. Vidu definitely knows how to play at this guy top lane. It looks like there's absolutely nothing happening. First game was kind of eh. So apologies to Attack Fang. There goes off the ult. Will the ult for Misfortune pick up the kill? No, 17 health! On Chaotic Entropy getting out of there with, I believe, a little bit lower than that. I actually see Graves getting dropped down there pretty low as well. 
Uh, so apparently Attack Fang, uh, new caster, you guys should definitely go check out. Uh, trying to hook him up with some games. Uh, casting a go for a long turning, yeah, 34 kills in 14 minutes. Holy crap! Yeah, there's lots and lots to focus on, definitely. But uh, here we go, 10 minutes into the game. Only 5 kills going down, so it is 1-4 to four in favor of uh, Incontinus. It's actually in Condite Gaming, so I believe uh, I just had to alt-tab out to check out that. Uh, apologies to them, but in Condite versus Team Death Ladder. I'm not sure if either of these teams have logos, but if they do, I'll make sure to put them up around the corners there so you guys can keep track a little bit after the fact. So uh, Flowers from Alchon is going to go ahead, go back, pick up that Rod of Ages most likely. How much gold does she have? About 800. I'm not sure that's enough to pick up Rod. No, it is not. She needs 850th of Rod recipe, but uh, we'll pay, be able to pick up that Catalyst. Top lane, we will see a gank attempt here coming in as the All-Star is going to be in here. Will we see a slow? No. Or Wall is just going to get out of there, uses his scrap shield to block most of that damage. And meanwhile, bottom lane got healed up just in time for that. And actually, was there a Soraka ult? No. And that's really got to, you know, kind of suck because Soraka would be the counter to Graves. But as they did pick up the Soraka first, they're like, hey, now they cannot counter my ult. And uh, all Vidu needs to do from this point onward is just stack and stack AP. He's going to see the rest of actually in Condite Gaming going for this dragon but with an ult there landed onto Vidu and the all-star will Vidu actually go down and he flashes over the wall an excellent flash choice as he was actually having a knight on him as well the ult going off from wag boss the all-star will go down yes picking up the kill and actually now hides is in the danger zone as Vidu is as well walking back in there maybe just a little bit too fast strut has been engaged and will this actually be enough to pick up Vidu yes it will and Vidu will go down going back in a little bit too fast uh, bush check there with the dark binding and that will be an excellent disengage for in Kondai gaming they're gonna, gonna go ahead clear out the ward in the back as that is some epic pink ward range and that's what happens when you pick up that extra five percent ward coverage and a few people tell me that was not good and actually is hella good as uh, does it opt to uh, does allow them to pick up that ward in the back of dragon and that will be the first dragon at 12 minutes for in Kondai gaming who are six kills ahead Actually, six kills total. Five kills ahead. I get my math right. L2 math. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Rewald's going to push out top lane, mid lane. Uh, Flowers for Algernon is going to go back, and after all of those shenanigans, we'll be able to pick up her uh, last uh, last whispering rod of awesomeness as well. Actually, no, I believe you need 850 for that recipe, so she pro well, pro will probably just pick up those boots once she gets 750 gold. Actually, opting for just that Doran's Ring and Wards, so apparently I don't know how to build Morganas. I definitely go Roa first after some Doran's, but uh, Wagboss uh, knows how to build Warwick. Is going for a gold per five based jungling, which is uh, effective. Warwick having basically the smallest mana pool in the game at level seven, only having about 400 uh, mana, which is definitely going to keep that Q spam down to an all time low. Bottom lane has just been getting dominated by Yes and uh, Company, and by Company I mean uh, Leisure, who's been doing just an amazing job at uh, supporting with Janna. Uh, lines up a full ult there, it has to cancel it a little bit early, but now that Leisure is coming in here, Yes just goes ahead, tanks a full Graves ult to the face, and now Hides is in trouble, the exhaust is down, that will reduce the damage by 70%, Hides gets pinned against the wall, but Leisure will go down there after tanking turret basically forever, Chaotic Entropy is in the danger zone as well, will fall down, Yes just getting so much health and so much healing from that Janna ult allowing her to pick up two kills and then walking out of there alive with about 170 health and if Karthus were on the other team things would be going not too well for uh, Flowers for actually it's not Flowers for Algernon it's yes Flowers for Algernon is actually playing mid on Morgana and uh, that's a pretty epic ward placement there I'm not sure that's quite where the ward was supposed to jump over the wall but it is not in the bush and that will not allow and the members of Team Death Ladder to uh, go ahead and pick that up. We'll actually get the kill top lane. Rewald says, I want an assist on that. Yo, the Ignite goes off, and that will be another kill on Rewald. So all four of those kills going to uh, Team Death Ladder have uh, resulted in assists. If you go ahead and check out, there's one, two, three, four, five, six assists for Team Death Ladder, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, as uh, this guy... 
definitely knows how to uh, do the assisting, that's for sure. And as support, that's really what you gotta do. You have to go for as many assists as you can, because otherwise, like, that really allows you to get as many GP5s as you want, as you see Leisure going triple GP5s. I don't know about that, but apparently that gives her enough gold to buy Hella Wards as well as an Oracle, so she is rolling in the gold right now. And I don't know how that's going to fare as far as completing extra items. But it's going to be pretty effective right now as uh, Heinz and Yes are just going to trade their hearts out uh, bottom lane as I believe Yes is pretty confident in his ability to go ahead and, uh, you know, I said go ahead again. Ah! Curse is foiled again uh, to trade effectively here with Heinz. Just so much damage as you just already have a BF sword into pickaxe. That Infinity Edge is almost completed on its way. Flowers for Algernon is coming down bottom lane as they know that there is no ward coverage here. Uh, Flowers for Algernon's gonna drop around there, misses actually the uh, Dark Biting and then will not be able to pop the ult there as well either. Hides and Chaotic Entropy will get out of dodge there, they will pop the ult, forcing the flash over the wall from Yes, who actually dodges the entirety of Leisure and uh, the Black Shield will get Leisure out of the way and force flash over the wall by Morgana. Will that be enough to pick up the All-Star? The Dark Biting goes off and that will be a kill for Flowers for Algernon. Vidu is attempting to pick up the kill there on Yes, the flash is good but will the wall be enough to pick up the kill? He's just going to opt for the save alternative. Picking up a Sona with... That's not a Sona, it's a Janna. With the Q, Flowers for Algernon and Yes will both get out of there alive. And that will be 5-9, to nine, your kill score. Going uh, one for one as the All-Star did fall down there as well. So, things are pretty even, I guess I'd say. Still a solid gold advantage for Inkandai Gaming, and uh, Lighthouse X is definitely doing some work at top lane. Let's check out his items. He does have a wit's end into double door ends with no boots being built quite yet, whereas Rewald is just building for that uh, Woda, but uh, I'm not sure if that's really going to be able to scale on the level of uh, Lighthouse X's sustain. He's already popping Tiger Stance. He wants to go out there and get as much attack speed as he can. Will this be enough to pick up the kill? He wants to dive, but with the slow ult from uh, you know the Equalizer, that's not really going to be something that's a really safe opportunity. So you really see things sort of changing from more the M5 metagame, where it's all about see hero, kill hero, to the more of the CLG meta, where it's like see hero, uh, kill minion. So that definitely looks like what Lighthouse X is opting for. He's just going to go ahead, kill all the minions, and then kill all the turrets, apparently, as the top turret will go down, giving the first turret of the game here to uh, Team Death Ladder, which is something that they can definitely use to bring themselves back into the gold, uh, well, the gold game. Will that Dark Binding hit? Oh, my goodness, so close. Barely missing out on that, a little bit slow on the zoom-in, but Leisure definitely knows what's up, as uh, he did actually lose Oracles that last fight. Bottom lane... Those pings will be going off onto Chaotic Entropy, who dropped down extremely low. Rumble's just going to push his lane back out. And actually, just AFK pushing the lane is not really the most effective. What you really need to do is shape a snowball. And what you do is, on cannon minion waves, you just kill off the enemy cannon minion. And that makes the wave hold, but it does not give it the damage to counter push. So it eventually builds up an excellent wave there. And uh, we'll start the snowball, which pushes all the way down to the enemy turret. So... There's a little bit of lane dynamics there uh, from more of an economics point of view that uh, has really started to uh, shape the way that top laners play. Wagboss sitting in this uh, warded bush, but it's only warded by, uh, ooh, actually, a pink ward there from Team Death Ladder. We'll scout out that uh, Flowers for Algernon and company are all going to go for this dragon. The teleport is good, and actually, this will signal the teleport in by Vidu. He's jumping in on top of absolutely everything. He does not have enough damage to survive there is actually yes he does he will go ahead and live but is taking dragon will finally fall down there but so much damage in the dragon pit going off that is three members for the opposing team down four members with that ult and just trading the all-star and vidu for four kills rubble actually almost fell down as well getting away with just over 150 health and oh my goodness that is just how effective it is when oh wait every single person in the game stands on top of your uh, your ult so much health coming back there. Does he actually have the uh, spell vamp? No, he's just going for massive, massive damage. And uh, you just saw how effective that was. When you just teleport in, jump in on that uh, that pit, and then, oh wait, you just kill all the things, essentially. 
That is just what happens when you go teleport on your mid lane carry, especially on something as pivotal and diable as, uh, diable. That's my new word for this cast, as apparently that is what, uh, what Karthus is. Bottom lane, Hines actually able to push down a whole wave into Yes's turret. He's just like, I, I don't actually care. I have Infinity Edge and Zeal with that necessary Vampiric Scepter just to give you essentially a Bloodthirster with all that massive damage. Uh, people started to figure out that uh, Lifesteal, you know, it's a percentage based off of damage. So when you get a Bloodthirster, you could get a Bloodthirster or you could just go for a little bit less Lifesteal. It's super cheap and then just kind of go for, oh wait, massive damage to make up for the difference in percentage lifesteal. All-Star is going to keep most of this uh, CS from getting wasted to turret, but and by most of it, I mean he's going to walk in the lane, kill off a minion, and then walk back out. As he's like, oh my goodness, I'm even scared of Karthus too. He's actually looking to go for a Hextech into Woda, which is a little bit late, especially after you've already built up your entire Rod of Ages, which has about halfway left to go as far as stacks are concerned. Go ahead and check out real wall. You can see exactly what he's running. Zeroes in a lot of the AD, but tons of spell vampires. He does have his uh, Will of the Ancients going for a Rhylize next. Vidu is sitting mid, just being like, hey, you know, I can clear this wave all day, son. And uh, there's pretty much a uh, really good matchup against Morgana. You know, Morgana's thought to be one of those just really, really strong AP mids just because of how uh, uncounterable she is. But uh, when you're doing a pushing farm lane and you're going up against Karthus, that just works right into his strategy as that is exactly what Karthus does want. Karthai, Karthus says, 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 and yes! Going down there to the excellent ult there from the all-star. That AP damage from that Gangplank ult. Let's see what it does. It deals, uh, yeah, 7 seconds of cannonballs with 120 damage per cannonball. That is ridiculous. Nice smoke graves as apparently, yeah, that was a little bit uh, effective at uh, concealing the Gangplank being waiting in the wings. But speaking of waiting in the wings, Lighthouse next is going to attempt to get out. But will he be able to bear stance his way to victory and great justice? Yes, he will get out of there alive. As uh, Wagboss did use his ult to hold him still there for a little bit, and actually the ult used there from a wall, apparently not equalizing and things enough to pick up the kill. Viduk dropping down ridiculously low there as well. Was there a tussle mid lane? Yes, there was. Morgana did throw down her ult. I cannot watch all the things at once as I can only focus on one epic, epic confrontation at a time. Hind and Chaotic Entropy had theirs, and then we rolled up to mid lane, but apparently uh, after going up top lane, there was something else back mid lane that I missed, and... Ah, these guys make it way too hard on us casters, yo. All-Star is going to go ahead and clear out the jungle while uh, Vidu and Lighthouse, Lighthouse Sex are going to roll back towards the mid lane. Push things on towards their turret and actually things are tied up in the turret count. And actually, there's only a 200 gold or 2,000 gold rather uh, difference as far as gold is concerned. But uh, really what's uh, going to make the difference are these towers. And Lighthouse X is doing some work pushing those in. Uh, Wagboss does have his ult up just off cooldown. And if I was for Algernon, we'll have that up in about another five seconds. So Chaotic Entropy and Hines really kind of need to uh, go back, get their items, and then move on up to uh, the mid lane as things are solidly moving into the mid to late game. It's already 22 minutes into the game. You're going to have your first couple of really necessary items to complete your characters. And uh, wow, Mobility Boots, triple gold for five items, and Oracles on uh, Unleasher. And she's just going... One of the great things about triple gold for fives is that they do allow you to... And buy as many oracles as you want. It's really not that big a deal as you just have so much money coming in. The downside is that, oh wait, you don't actually have effective aura items, rather, you know, supporty type items. You just have tons and tons. Ooh, that was supposed to go over the wall. Whoopsies. But uh, wall there from uh, Vidi is going to give them a little bit of sight and uh, a little bit of positioning for... Uh, Team Death Ladders, they really will need this. And will that ward actually go down? Yes, it will. Yes, picking up the kill even before Leisure got there with the Oracles. It's like one of the greatest things to happen bottom lane. If you are support or AD carry and you're like right on top of the place that they ward and you just auto fast enough to kill the ward, you're like, yes, success kid. Now Lighthouse is standing on top of a ward. He probably knows that there's something going on as another ward was just placed in that bush. Wag Boss is positioning. He definitely will be the initiator for this uh, upcoming confrontation. Just taking one person out of the game. Could get silenced out of it immediately by Soraka and I'll definitely try to pay attention to a chaotic entropy. Will she pop that silence off? And that's just going to really be pretty game changing. And that's most of what Warwick does is he has a suppress and uh, lots of uh, lots of that auto attack and damages. 
Ah, as well. Uh, so as far as auto attack damages are concerned, we see Yes running around here. How much gold does she have? She has 1650. Could go back and pick up a BF sword and or turn this into uh, a Phantom Dancer. Yeah, that's just enough gold to go back and get a Phantom Dancer. But instead, she's just going to stay up top lane and farm out that way before doing basically anything. Leisha's going to take out the ward. That's uh, Team Death Ladder just dropped over there. And so as far as where both teams are right now in their builds, Yes, is ridiculously strong after Heinz has been pretty shut down for most of the game. Doesn't even have Infinity Edge or Zeal yet, so that Graves is hurting right now. He is only at 161 farm versus the 213 for Yes, and uh, I don't know, guys. It's not looking good for our heroes if our heroes are Team Death Ladder. They definitely have a really strong AoE team comp, and it's all going to be about that positioning for the next fight. It looks like both teams want to... Ah, I've been saying it looks like again... Both teams up here <laughs> to want to position around Baron for that, uh, the next team fight as uh, Chaotic, Entropy, and uh, what is it, Leisure are both uh, dewarding as much as possible. Bidu's waiting there to do the initiates, and there goes in the wall. It will catch Leisure. She will take a lot of damage, but an excellent push out there. The flash in by Bidu. He will go down almost instantaneously. An excellent Zarya's there. Will actually not make her targetable for the... Uh, ult there from Karthus as uh, it looks like Yes will be the next to fall but no an excellent black shield keeps Yes alive with under 100 health she's able to sustain through absolutely everything and that is a perfect black shield just keeping uh, Misfortune alive until the very end Wagboss can pretty much solo this with auto attacks I'm not sure if Ruwald wants to get that much closer he's going to wind up taking Baron unless Warwick gets that much closer but yeah Flowers for Algernon jumping in there perfect uh, ability to tank there and even though Oh my goodness, look at just how much Yes is healing from that. And Fedge and Randuins are the pickups for their opposition, but oh my goodness. That's a little bit uh, a little bit intense. She does also have Phantom Dancer. Yes just going off that fight. So much CC from the Wargana ult. And uh, really kind of an improper engage by Vidu. You know, I'm not calling out the pros. They definitely know what they're doing more than I do. But it just seemed like he got burst down really low. And then he flashed aggressively into the enemy team. Who just really avoided him after he died. So, Wagbot's going to roll over here. Pick up another dragon. And uh, it's going to set the gold count solidly in favor of Incondite Gaming. So... I don't know. It's not looking good for uh, Team Death Ladder. They definitely have what it takes to uh, come back in this game with such a strong AoE comp. I mean, if everybody just like stands in Karthus and Gangplank, there's not really anything to say about that other than GG. The yes, S pushing the wave all the way up to Lighthouse X, who already has Randuins into Wits End. And this is the Udyr build, uh, along with those Merc Treads. It just says, I am so tanky, there's nothing you can do. And oh, by the way, I don't need actual AD items to give me a defensive stats, as that is what's so perfect about Wits End. And actually, I was listening to uh, TSM, and apparently that may be it, you know, up for grabs as far as the nerf bat is concerned. But Walls just kind of hanging out here, uh, jumping around on his little... Uh, little machine there he's up to snuff and has himself a nice machine although he's not corky uh, though he is a yordle he will be picking up uh the wraith camp which is you know exciting and like epic shout casting but not extremely we are 28 minutes into this game and hopefully a hard drive space permitting i will be able to bring you the epic conclusion as that is apparently all we have left both teams just sitting around farming up and that's really what uh, team death ladder wants to do they're just like hey the later it gets the better we are as graves needs to get back into the game just now picking up his infinity edge needs that attack speed increasing item even though he does have the attack speed increase from his uh from his dash, which I believe, yeah, it gives him 80% increased attack speed for four seconds. Come on, co-caster. Ah, I need somebody else to talk here, but unfortunately was not able to grab anyone in the meantime. Back to the matter of hand, you see a mid turret will go down here to just so much attack speed. It does not look good for that mid turret. An excellent dark binding will catch Vidu dropping him down, but uh, did he actually pick up? No, he's actually just going for the hex deck and stopping at that. Doesn't want that 8% extra Spell vamp, even though Woda on uh, Karthus is ridiculously effective. There goes down the initiate by Ruwald. Will we actually see the ult there? Yes, the all star did get ulted. Orange is out of there, and it is Kate. Flowers for Algernon only catching a Bidu in his ult that will be good enough to avoid most of the damage, but will she actually be able to get out of there alive? Yes, Wagboss will pick up the kill. Rumble falling down there, but the all star goes down as well. And really, what happened there? Yes died eventually there tried to get some support there but ultimately Udyr was able to pick up that kill and uh, I don't know man it's not looking good for ooh, 
No kill there on Leisher, so Karthus just got robbed. But Hines right now is going to go down to Wagboss. Black Shield, unfortunately, does not block tower damage. Man, a turret style magic damage is like GG. Just build like literally nothing but MR for the entire game and basically win. That's the uh, upside of having... Uh, if the opponents have a heavy AD team, you build armor and you can also turret dive all day long. Ooh, actually a uh, Sunfire Cape going for a little bit of additional DPS. Surprised we don't see like a Wit's End on Warwick. That's really sort of his tank item of choice. A Sunfire Cape, not really the greatest item just because it really stinks the uh, ratio of health to, uh, you know, as far as the Giant's Belt is concerned. You get so much health off of every single other item that the Giant's Belt builds into, so... Taking a little bit of a uh, drink break is uh, talking for 50 minutes straight. Actually, there's another 45 minute game before this, so it's been a little bit over an hour, but uh, back to the game and not the matter at hand. Rewald, Leisha, and Wagboss pushing up that mid lane as, uh, oh, Vidu's gonna get jumped on here by Flowers for Algernon, and uh, that's not gonna keep him from taking that blue buff. But it will drop him down to about half health, so he's going to need to do something about that. Either DPS it up off of the Wolves, which should be respawning not really very soon at all. Uh, or the Wraith Camp just needs to uh, fix that. Try to get it off of that wave. I don't actually see exactly how much he's healing off of that, but he does already have up to 2200 health. But meanwhile, bottom lane, it's just like, yes, AFK pushing this bottom turret. Will she be able to get in in time? Yes! And yes, as yes picks up yes's turret, whatever. The ult goes off there as there is an engage lighthouse dropping dangerously low, but unable to uh, unable to die, unwilling to quit, which is an amazing team from Utah. Shout out to Utah League of Legends battles. Check them out on Facebook. But uh, a wild plugs are aside. Flowers for Aljon getting off a really good dark binding there on chaotic entropy, dropping him to about half health as mid turret looks like it will actually go down, and that will be the first base turret of the game here. Four team in Condite Gaming. Leisha's dropping down really low, trying to push people back into horrible situations. She will eventually go down to the Graves first as he has been uh, able to do massive damage. The Zonyas will block the ult there from Karthus, but <laughs> Vidu walks right into the turret. Actually, Flowers for Algernon walking right into the turret. Will Hines be able to pick up the kill here? No! Flashing away at apparently not the right second as Hines will pick up that kill as well. So, right now... I don't know, man. That was an incredibly even fight. Only Wagboss getting out alive for in Kondite Gaming. They do pick up the uh, the tower. Inhib will regen that little bit of health that it has lost. Wagboss is going to try to live steal back off of the uh, wolf camp, but uh, that was a pretty good fight there by. Yeah, Team Death Ladder. Oh my goodness. Yawn plus stretch. Ugh. OP. Chaotic Entropy and uh, Heinz are going to roll up to uh, the top lane. Wagboss is uh, going to get out of there, but uh, I'm not sure. Looks like the counter push could be pretty devastating here for Team... Uh... Mm. Ah, sorry about that. Team Death Ladder. Ah, I swear. It's got the OGN lols on late at night, got the uh, the late night tournaments, and a uh, horrible KST based sleep schedule for myself. So, uh, yes, he's going to pick up a red buff, and uh, let's just uh, take a moment to sit back and consider a little bit of uh, what's going on in this build here today. It looks like we do have Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, Bloodthirster, Phantom Dancer are the items of choice here for Yes, who has yet to pick up a single defensive item unless you count the uh, extra move speed and or health offered by the Doran's Blade. So, Yes is going to be doing ridiculous damage. He just like literally walks up to Chaotic Entropy. It's like, how fast would you like your Chaotic Entropy to be this time around? And apparently it's pretty fast and pretty chaotic as uh, that Soraka pretty much didn't, just didn't stand a chance. This will be a Baron buff almost certainly here for a uh, team uh, in Condite Gaming, and uh, I don't know, that was a pretty fast Baron. They're gonna land a Dark Fighting. The ult goes off there for Rubble, and the tankiest member of Team Death Ladder will go down. Vidu pops to the ultimate there for Flowers for Algernon, and there's gonna be an ult here for Morgana. She's gonna actually Zanyas instead of just Spell Shielding, so Spell Shield was not off cooldown. I'm not sure why you'd blow Zanyas. He could just heal up that extra damage off of things like, oh wait, a wild all-star appears, does get hit by that CC. The Ignite goes down and as he does not have hardly any MR at all, he will go down by hardly any MR. I mean, a Negatron Cloak, which was not effective at blocking all the damages that just came off there from Rumble. Doesn't even have magic penetration boots. And now that will be four and five members for Team 
in Condite, rolling up through the mid lane into the base, and with only Hines and Chaotic Entry P to defend, this is going to be a really rough push. OP Smoke Bomb goes down, but that will not stop the first turret of the uh, Nexus. It's going down there. The second turret will fall immediately, and well played. GG coming out there by Rewald. And uh, GG is coming out from the rest of the team. Congratulations to Incondite Gaming for taking the second round win over Team Death Ladder in Go For Law number 56. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. And uh, I will go ahead and see you guys in the next game. Peace out.